So I thought, what if we made stay in the air for X amount of time worth the risk if you greatly benefit from it? Stay in the air for most endgame content tend to be a death sentence considering how quickly you can die, but unless you play something like Borderlands or Warframes where special perks may stay in the air viable, do his own destiny comes with his own risk. But that's the thing about destiny, not everything needs to be endgame designed, and in fact today's build is very anti endgame. You may have heard or done an AC-130 Warlock build before, both in PvE and PvP, and they are great fun to use when you want to sit back and relax. So here's my take on the build, as my version will be using Wings of Sacred Dawn, which is a very, very unusual thing to see. If you do use this build, you'll get the following benefits in return. You can stay in the air for much longer than normal, you can get damage buff, healing and restoration effects while in the air or on the ground, you will get damage reduction while in the air and can then stack that damage on top of other damage reduction you have. You can rain absolute hell onto everyone below you and feel like an absolute superhero or god in the making. It's truly odd to see, but fun to use if you're ever looking to add it to your collection of builds. So like always, if you enjoyed the video then I would appreciate a like, a sub, a share and for you to turn your notifications as it does go a long way for me. So to make this work, you're going to want to build this into a PvP setup first, and then build into the PvE aspect after. The reason I say this is because using Icarus Dash and Heat Rises are mainly PvP aspects that top players use to briefly get around the maps faster. We will use this part as well, but we aim to stay in the air for longer and then go from there. In short, it's very simple to get this part here right, as there isn't a lot to work with, which makes our lives a bit better in the mean run. So let's go over the main items used. We have Icarus Dash where you can dodge quickly while in the air. While airborne, defeating the target with your super or weapon grants cure. Heat Rises allows us to fire weapons, melee and grenades while gliding. The finer blows while airborne increase the duration of Heat Rises and grants melee energy. For Fragments you want Ember of Ashes so you can apply more scores to targets. Ember of Torches where powered melee hits against combatants make you and your allies radiant. Ember of Benevolence, where granting healing, cure or restoration to others would give you grenade, midi and class ability regen, and Ember of Sindering, where scorching targets grant class ability energy. For stats you want 90 to 100 resilience, 70 recovery, and 80 to 90 in discipline. The key mods to have are Wrath of Rasputin for clearing Warmind cells via solar splash damage, Warmind protection where enemies within 10 meters of a cell deal 50% less damage to you, Seeking Well for Elemental Worlds to track to you, Elemental Armors for creating Elemental Worlds via solar weapon kills, and Battle Well for plus 2 worlds created. As shown, the base of the aspects are very easy to build into since the options there are limited to begin with. From there you can build into the fragments as you please, but I would advise you to build into healing and empowerment as those are simple to do but also give you the greatest benefits to go from there. After that, the rest of the build then falls into place depending on what mods you have, and what you want to invest in the most in terms of ability usage. If you can try and cover all stats as best you can, then you will have less to worry about in terms of mods being used at a later date. Now weapons will vary heavily on what you have and what weapons will be used the most. Although I have an AR, grenade launcher and heavy machine gun in usage, most of the time I will be using my grenade launcher and heavy machine gun as the main primary weapons of usage but this can be changed depending on the situation. So let me briefly go over my primary weapons here as you may feel differently in terms of the choice used. I have the Horror Story AR with Ambitious Assassin and Demolitionist which will greatly help me with getting grenades back faster and thus keep effects of heat rises and healing ongoing. You don't need to follow the same method as shown depending on if you have the same fragment as I have and you also have a higher discipline stat like shown. But at the same time, if you want to stay in the air for longer, then this is the best way forward, just in case, as having grenades there and then whilst in the air means you can pop it whenever you like. Alternatively, any weapon with substance is going to allow you to remain in the air for long as well, as you won't need to reload so much and break out of the in-air action, which is a common trait you'll come across. The secondary is the explosive personality grenade launcher with auto-loading and frenzy, and this is one of those roles you want to have just for the sake of solo builds in the future. We can use this as a heavy hitting artillery piece while in the air and then use this to create warmind cells upon more kills when we get lucky. 
The best thing about this though is that we can use this in between our weapons thanks to the auto loading effect. So after using it the first time, we can instantly swap to another weapon, wait, and then go back to it again and repeat, which works out really well for this build when we are surrounded on all sides. Now to be fair, any solo grenade launcher is good to use here, and even the dead messenger can be handy here if you don't have the following heavy machine gun like shown. The heavy now is the air apparent, which is a monster heavy machine gun to use for anything like this, or just want to go overkill on something. It has a big magazine, provides an arc overshield with quite a bit of defense to it, and the sheer firepower to it packs quite a punch, and it's just overall amazing. This is one of those weapons you want to add for the warship build, as it really does a lot of damage over time, or there and then, depending on who you face. If you don't have this, then any heavy machine gun is good to use, as they have been buffed quite a bit as of lately, and the choices now are a lot more flexible than compared to before. For the stats, we have to be a bit flexible here, as nearly everything here will be used within our arsenal. Resilience, recovery, discipline, and strength will all play a part in the build, even on this small scale, but nonetheless, a part within the finalization of the build. Let's start with resilience at 90. The point of us being in the air for long is to rain absolute hell onto everyone against you, while staying alive as long as possible. We have ways to cure and boost health regen over time, but we do need quite a bit of damage reduction so that we can slow down the amount of damage incoming to us while in the air. Remember, being in the air out in the open will result in us being easily targeted, so to prevent this we will need quite a high damage reduction to cover us. 90 to 100 resilience is a good area to aim for, and then having warm air protection mod will boost our defenses even further. We also have the Wings of Sacred Dawn exotic effect of providing a 15% damage reduction while in the air, and then lastly, Air Apparent Shield, it can also provide that as well. Against anything in casual content, this base defense is enough for you to take on a Ultra's attack and still have enough health to where you can take a few more hits, just fine. A discipline at 80 and Strength at 30 is a suitable area to then aim for because of how the subclass works. Thanks to the Heat Rises effect, this will link into Strength as Heat Rises secondary effect allows us to gain mini energy while it's active. So you can have this one stat at 30 for example, and this is enough for you to use your melee more often. Now when you see the build in action, you'll get a better grasp at it, and why there's no point of heavily investing into this one stat alone. Lastly, recovery can then be at any level you like, as we'll be using it here and there. 50 to 70 is a good place to stay at, and going anything more than that is kind of useless. Left over wise, we have Harmonic Siphon, where rapid elemental kills can produce orbs of power. Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder allows us to find more ammo while Grenade Launcher is out. Absolution for reducing all ability cooldown upon collecting the orb power. Machine Gun Scavenger for more ammo in reserves. Distribution for reducing all ability cooldown when using our class ability. And Explosive Finisher for restoring grenades at the cost of one fifth of our super. With that covered, here's the full breakdown and pros and cons of the build. For head, we have Resilience, Harmonic Siphon, Grenade Launcher Ammo Finder, and Rapid Rasputin mod. Arm, we have Resilience and Warman Protection mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Thermal Shot Plating, Cacus of Dampner, and Seekin Wells mod. Leg, we have Resilience, Machine Gun Scavenger mod, Absolution, and Elemental Armors mod. Bond, we have Resilience, Explosive Finisher, Distribution, and Bound for Well mod. To be very honest with you all, I haven't really touched the Sacred Dawn at all since PvP back in the day as it was fun to mess around with, and build customization then was extremely limited to a few things. So why I'm trying this in PvE now is also strange, as I know the weakness of the build can really put people off who are more used to grounded builds. The point of the build is to create a more off meta setup, so you can equip it anytime you like, while playing with your friends, or just wanted to relax and mix things up. Though the build can make you a large target for staying in the air for long and out in the open, it can be used sparingly when you know you have to drop to do so. The pro to the build is that you can stay in the air for a good few minutes as long as you trigger the right fragments and use the following weapons to stay in flight. You can also get health back fairly quick thanks to the Icarus Dash and Heat Rise's additional benefits. So while in the air for X amount of time, if you take too much damage, then you can heal up there and then and then get back to work. You're also quite tanky while in the air thanks to the Wings of Sacred Dawn and Solar Traits, air apparent, warm up protection, and your resilience stat, which is what gave me the idea to start this build off. 
And lastly, you're also quite mobile while in the air, and this can be used to zip across areas when things get too heated, which you'll come across quite a bit. You overall get a warship build that's capable of tanking a large amount of damage, heal itself on demand, shoot out a huge amount of damage, and can fly for as long as you like. It's crazy fun to use in Nightfalls or Legendary content, as you never really see these type of crazy builds become common in game because of their disadvantages. But as it's off meta, this is where this sort of build can flourish in the right environments. But like I said earlier, do not whatsoever use this in Master Content or above unless you're feeling pretty brave. I have tested this, and although we do have a good selection of items that can heal us and keep us in the fight, it's way too risky to use out in the open and expect everything to run fine. You can use this in Master Wild Spring or Catch Crash, as these are 6 man activities and you work along with your team, but anything outside of that is quite a big no no. So, yeah, an AC 130 warship build is fun to use in Destiny, and I do wish we had more exotics that focused on certain aspects in game that aren't always based around damage buffs. Sometimes the most simplest things tend to be the best things in life and I believe that's something that Destiny does need every now and then. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content and banter and stuff like that. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all next one.